up legends? Alright, so we have the first one done. Uh, I obviously didn't film it again. Now my world is pretty rough here. I had a few um, tips from quite a few people actually regarding my welding and they said you're just probably a bit too cold um, and probably going a bit too quick with the heat that I had on it. So because it was building up. So now I've upped the amps but my pool's just massive now. So anyway, it's it's sealed. That's the main thing. It's definitely not pretty. Um, it's really hard to get in there. But anyway, it's um, turned out real good how I had the hole smaller than this because now I can just file it out and I have and it's like pretty much got it spot on. So no dags, nothing. Hasn't been cleaned out yet because we've got one more to go here. So um, what I have is this bung from Silica Spares. So see how it's got an inner lip. Uh, so you just want to get that inner lip to sit in the hole perfectly. So that lip there is 25mm. Uh, and everyone would be thinking you just use 20mm 20 mil, 25mm hole saw. But uh, I'm going to use this bad boy. The top one is 24mm. So um, it'll give me a mil to sort of massage around and just create the hole big enough so I can tap that in and then just buzz around it. So fingers crossed, uh, I can make this world freaking perfect. And um, yeah, I'm gonna use the old uh, engineered to slide TIG settings. Uh, so my buddy Nigel, if you guys don't know, I've actually signed up to his TIG course now. So he gives you like all the settings you should be using for the thickness of the material, um, like, I don't know, all the stuff that makes no sense to me hurts and all this stuff. There's that many settings on these things. I just thought you'd, you know, put the amps in, AC or DC, and away you go. But, uh, yeah, learning heaps, so big thanks to Nige um, from Engineered to Slide. Uh, the course is available to anyone, and, um, yeah, he's a bloody good egg. So if you guys want to learn how to TIG, MIG, whatever, fabricate roll cages, um, pretty much build an entire car, you can learn off his website now. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. But anyway, I'm gonna cut that out, do this last one and get this side done, so then we can move on to the other side. Exciting. I just wanted to show you guys uh, what I'm doing wrong, so hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes. So this here was my first tack on this side. Now, what I've been doing is I've been angling the torch way too much. So I've been like, to tack that, I've been angling from like here. So all the gas, when I go to feed the filler rod into the, from the left side, it burns it before it gets to where my puddle is. So I really should have the torch like that and then quickly flick my filler rod in as it gets hot. So I stuffed up on that one, I stuffed up on that one, and then I realized what I was doing wrong, and I got this one right. And you can see I started going pretty damn good around there. And I just wanted to stop to um, let you guys know what I was doing wrong. kind of went really well. I mean, it doesn't look good maybe to you guys, but to me, that is freaking. Mm. And look, the thread's still good. Surprised how freaking hot this alley gets. Anyway, uh, to me, that is a flying success. Now, I don't know if you could tell, because obviously I'm going to speed up the welding bit, but um, i got a bit of a shaky hand, so it doesn't really help either. But yeah, like, so that weld is still way too big. That should really be like really small. Uh, and like when I say small, like like this for instance. See how that one's like really small and just freaking well done. Hmm. Yeah, we'll get there one day. But this side is officially freaking done. Oh, that's good. Now I'm just gonna clean it up, make sure there's nothing inside. Um, and don't touch it until it's cooled down. And then, yeah, scour 
got to clean all that white crap off and um, give it the old brush finish, I reckon. Proud of this one. First ever pipe completed. So now, we'll uh, put the O-rings on the end. Oh, I haven't actually explained how these clamps work. So we're going to do that real quick. So these are the clamps, right, bin fab. So they come with this ring on the inside uh, and obviously your two weld on bits, all right? So I've welded that on, welded the end cooler one on. So now all you need to do is obviously clean it. That one any, this is on the outside, forget me. Okay, so your O-ring goes on. You obviously do this bit after you've welded it because otherwise your O-ring will turn to schmutt. Um, and you butt this up with another one, which I'll show you, all right? This obviously goes over there, like a sole. And then when that lines up with the other one, you then just put this clamp on, all right? Shut it, shut the clamp, and then these little pins that have got a push end on them that releases that tiny little ball bearing at the end. I hope you can see that little ball bearing, you see it? So push it in, that releases it. So anyway, you push this pin in the end, obviously hold the pin in, done. I can't come undone. You can't. It'll be loose, it'll feel like it's wrong, but it's not. Job done. You want to take it off? Push the pin in, slide it out. Done. How good? How freaking good is that? The only downside, and it's literally the only one, is if you have a crash and you've got silicon joiners, you've got a little bit of room to wiggle there. Uh, so you can, you know, quickly slap things back together and get back out. With this, you have a bit of a bingle. Yeah, that's it. You can't just, um, you know, move the pipes a little bit, chuck an extra hose clamp on or whatever. Uh, but I, I've never had an issue with the RBM3 besides once. And that's when I went against Shane Van Gisberg in a freaking world time attack. I had one of these come off. Now, it was really, really sus. Um, the Plasma Man ones I use on that car have two Allen keys that you do up. And, you know, you do the two Allen keys up, job done. That's why I like these so much, because the split pin, it can't ever come undone. It's not like a bolt. So these two Allen keys found their self loose. One bracket out of all of them come loose and fell off just as I hit second gear coming up the hill on the south circuit at it, uh, Sydney Motorsport Park. Come off, no boost. Hand out the window. Sorry mate, can't keep going. And thankfully it didn't rear end me. And then, conveniently enough, he run over it and bent it as it fell off. So, um, yeah, couldn't put, call the five minutes and just slap it back together and away I go. So yeah, I still don't understand how that came loose, but... Hmm. You get that? So anyway, these, magic, when you fab, get on. <laughs> so there you go, it's in. And that's how loose it sits. It just, it's all good. And it can go in and out quite a long way. Um, so when I had it butted up, I was being pretty fussy. Um, and then my air temp sensor just sits here. Just plug that sucker right in. There's a lot of room for it to move. Actually, there's probably more. Jesus, that moves heat. And the vacuum line fits. There you go, guys. One pipe completed. And no, I don't run a blow off valve. Stuff your blow off valve. Ah, okay. On to the other side. That's cool. Can't believe I did it. Anyway, so here you go, guys. Even I can weld. So that means you can too. <laughs> Sorry, first thing, uh, I need to measure up this bit here coming down. Because I'm going to have to weld straight off of the turbo. Get rid of this crusty gold powder coat. Looks horrendous. 
I don't know what I was thinking. But um, what I will do is maybe hook all the power steering back up. I just drained all that and uh, one of the fixer lines and stuff. So I'll do all that and then uh, get cracking onto that. This side here. Kill. Rightio. So it was all going well-ish. God, it looks bad on camera. It is actually pretty rough. But anyway, it was all going really well. So I got to a dirty bit. So I must have left... A little bit of um, what's it called? Zoom in, man. The freaking powder coat on there. So yeah, I didn't want to weld over it. So now I've got to scour it and just finish that last bit. But I did it all in little stages. I think this side's a bit better. It just looks really ugly. I don't know why. We are getting there, but it does look a little bit stupid that massive long extension bit. But at least it's not going to be near any hot stuff. And then I'll have my um, two and a half to three inch uh, adapter there, and then I'll put the clamp right there. So um, it's a pretty big, pretty big dog leg. Oh, good old dog leg. Uh, the only downfall to that there is I can't see inside to make sure there's no cauliflower bits. But I'm at the point where I trust my welding. <laughs> <laughs> It'll seal, it's not pretty. But it will do. So you can see that's uh, expensive paid for TIG weld. And that's the old squiddy build up um, as strong as the freaking Eiffel Tower is as a hammer now. See? Looks magnificent. <laughs> it's a joke, guys. Uh, on to the next one. So this one, I just got to get rid of my shaky hand to be honest. This one I did a lot hotter than normal and it did sink in but I was just adding way too much filler because as soon as it sinks I freak out, it's going to burn a hole but um, as you can see, it's freaking perfect on the inside. Nothing's come through. She is a uh, bonza. That one's a ripper. Pumped. So now I've got to make that fit on that uh, and then... Yeah, I've just got to face it so it's a certain degree angle uh, and flat for now. So, oh, snap on. Um, so we'll just check the difference between the face of the turbo. Uh, I've got this cheap, cheap, like real cheap, free uh, spirit level app. I think you just put like level in the apps. Oh, you won't be able to see this properly. But anyway, we're looking for, we'll start with this way, shall we? So this way is Y, yep. So that's at two degrees. Let's look on here. 5.4, holy slapping duck shit. Uh, now we'll go this way, so that's 2.6. And that one's 1.2. What I'm trying to show you is you can just get an app for your phone. Use the flat, like the, the bottom side that's actually flat. Don't try and use the sides because most people have got cases and you've got little dicky bits hanging down. And so just use the back, which is flat, unless you've got cameras that protrude or whatever. Just your phone needs to be flat or just, you know, make reference to what that is and then just match it. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, I've got a lot to do and I can't keep facing that because it'll end up too big and just slide over the top. So I've got to be very specific. Specific? Passive. Cock on. Rightio. First dog leg, done. Now, there's probably some sort of reasoning behind not having a, a long schnout on your schnauzer. Man, it's so hot in here, I can't even frickin' talk properly. Uh, but this is where I found it the easiest to put the clamp on. Now, I'm only because I'm thinking radiator's here, clutch fan's there, there's freaking no room in there at all. It's hard enough getting the power steering uh, belt on and off. That goes up from here. But anyway, this line here, I could easily weld another 180 degree bend on it, but that comes back to here. So really that can be on top. Um, yeah, this line here comes up to this bit here. So now 
I just literally got to do a 90 into a 180. So from, yeah, the hole down there to this hole here. So what I have is um, a heap of cutoffs. So this bit, although it's not a 90, it's going to work out real good. So I'm just going to weld this to here um, and then figure out what angle I'm going to need here, if that's going to be enough or, you know, if I, I try and angle it a bit different. Uh, but with this coming off the cooler, so I'm going to weld another bit there, um, tape that to the cooler, tape this end to the other bit, and then I should literally have like that sort of distance to make up for. And I've still got a whole brand new 90 and then heaps over there. So, heaps of material. So I'm just gonna wing it. I have my first big blowout. Uh, thankfully, I'm going to be cutting about there, but uh, for some reason, I had it on real low amps as well, and it must have just got really hot. And then it just went right as over the edge at the top, it went pop, and I pulled the gas off, and it just blew a brig, a brig, a big crater. So I just got to do the other side there and buzz around it. Cut this where I need it cut and continue. Yeah, I just thought I'd show you. I make mistakes quite often. as we get today. I've been ushered elsewhere. So I've just got that last little bit to do. Uh, I've cut two little pie cuts. These are all the leftover like ones I had. Actually that one looks like I could, mm, anyway, I've committed. Um, yeah, I've put two together and now I'm just gonna face each side and yeah, hopefully line them up. Yeah, it's a bit of a I think I'm gonna angle that like that so then it's more straight and yeah, should be good. Should be good. So yeah, uh, gotta finish here and be back tomorrow. Same bid, tomorrow, cut. It's a couple of days later and quite a lot of hours more put in, but the last 
pipe is complete. So this one obviously comes through, lines up with that one there, and lines up with that there. So it's good enough. It's uh, if anything, as you sit it, uh, so that lines up with the cooler. This lines up with the turbo. It's got a little gap here, so um, yeah, it's it's actually worked out a lot better than I thought. Because um, I'm not going to lie, I've been winging it, winging it quite a lot. I just need to clean everything up now, and I have just ordered an electric throttle from Powertune, so <laughs> I'm going to have to redo all that. Uh, anyway, I want to get it running with all this. Uh, I've run out of time today again, so. I'm going to clean this joint up real quick and we'll be back again. We're not going to believe it. Piping's done. I even, uh, I forgot the little vacuum line on the back here, so welded on another little bung at the back. Uh, I had a little crack on that one form because this stuff's really thin, the two and a half that I, that was second hand that I reused, so uh, I suppose now I just got to pressure test it, but it should be, should be all good. It, yeah, it turned out pretty good, I reckon. Um, and no, I don't run a blow off valve, so all those asking. There you have it. Mini Fab cooler, done, and piping. That's, um, yeah, job done, in-house. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna end this video there because this has been dragging on for way too long. Uh, and the next video will be this thing running because it's it's all ready to go. Um, and yeah, we'll uh, we'll get straight into it. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, and if you can give me any advice, tips, tricks, whatever, feel free to send it through. Uh, much would be much appreciative. It's freaking hot in here. <laughs> See you, guys.